This is the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of November 7th, 2016. And the subject for this week's podcast is profanity. And I suppose some of you are going to wonder how I plan on talking about profanity without using profanity. Well, it's actually not the hardest thing in the world to do. And it wasn't actually as hard as trying to decide a topic for this week's podcast. This is such an interesting and exciting week. But profanity, well, okay. First of all, let me get this out of the way. It's kind of the elephant in the room. I think that there are very few of us, no matter who you are and what side of the world you reside on, who hasn't had an opportunity this year to exclaim out in a profane way, whether it was your favorite rock artist dying or something in world affairs or your favorite baseball team winning the World Series, which, by the way, I was very pleased to see that the Chicago Cubs did pull it off. I'm a Red Sox fan myself, but, man, I've got mad respect for those boys. Anyway, this has been the year, I, at least in my life, when I have been most likely to want to swear, even if I didn't. Profanity in entertainment has a long history at this point. You have to go back to a guy named Lenny Bruce, who first introduced profanity into what was then extremely clean comedy. And the real hallmark with the use of profanity in entertainment came in the early 1970s with vanguard artists like George Carlin, who uh, created a routine called The Seven Words You Can't Say on Television. If you've never heard it, it's hilarious. Google it. Not the point. But now we find ourselves in a world where profanity is a lot more accepted than it was in our grandparents' day. We use it a lot more often and without fear of retribution. I think profanity in the workplace is actually diminishing. I think we sort of saw peak profanity three or four years ago, and we're beginning to see that the use of profanity in some cases marginalizes people in a way that we don't really want to do that, because a lot of profanity derives from the idea of people who were perhaps not as desirable at one time as other people and their habits. So, getting back to the main point of it all, profanity in entertainment. It would come as a surprise to a lot of you, I bet, to know that there are almost no standards for the use of profanity in cable and satellite broadcasting. That's right, The FCC really only regulates profanity on over-the-air transmissions because cable and satellite aren't what's considered a public trust. In other words, broadcasting is designed to be for the benefit of everyone, and I mean television broadcasting, but cable and satellite are a closed system. You can do more or less anything you want. There's no standard saying you have to have profanity only after 8 o'clock local time, for example. And that is why you see premium channels like HBO featuring nudity, profanity, or whatever the heck they feel like any old time of the day or night. And we're seeing even basic cable channels are starting to use more and more profanity as it becomes just sort of standard practice. And people understand that we have these things called parental controls. Every television program is rated, and if you don't want to hear profanity, you can simply program your television to not ever allow you to play it. This is important. If you've got kids and you don't want to have them hear that stuff, then don't have them hear that stuff. Profanity goes hand-in-hand with obscenity, I suppose, Uh, hand-in-hand being an unintentional pun, because when you talk about profanity, you're really talking about things that, if you did them, would be obscenity. HBO came under fire recently for a protracted scene of some fairly graphic content in Westworld a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, HBO has been showing this kind of stuff for decades, but all of a sudden HBO is also showing Sesame Street, so it seems like it casts things in a different light. And it brought up the idea that you need to absolutely understand parental controls because the world of entertainment, if not the world in general, is becoming more profane, but you have the power. You have the power to set parental controls on every TV, on every set-top box, in every streaming situation. And that, my friends, is the end of the line. I'm running out of time. Talk to you soon.